Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today the final card in my three card series using Lawn Fawn's Berry Rainy Day stamp set. Using the leftovers I had on my desk from my first card, I am creating my third and final card. Using up all of those beautiful scrapped squares. So using that square as my base, I kind of wanted to make my puddle stretch across the base of it to give my image a grounding area. And nothing I had in my puddle or pond stash from Lawn Fawn fit that, you know, width and length that I needed. And obviously I couldn't draw a puddle because I overthink way too much, I guess. I don't know. My first one was probably my best one, and I would have been fine to keep it. But I didn't. They just got worse from there. So I ended up just masking that stamp off, and then I could line it up through the piece of paper because the paper was super thin. So I could see where I needed it. And then all I had to do was connect those two lines. I'm just using a cheap fine liner that I got off of Amazon. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a puddle, right? But it looked better than any of my hand-drawn puddles, so we went with it. And then I'm just going to pick out my images for my card. I am just using that little bear that is jumping and then the two little splashes. So coloring-wise, this one really didn't take a whole lot of time because it was only those few images and the puddle and the splashes are a fairly simple one to color. I did go with a tealy green or tealy blue for the puddle this time and then just blended it out to a lighter white doing some tip to tip like the colorless blender to just lighten it as I went and it worked beautifully. And I decided, so I had pre-cut my squares already. And I was planning on doing a four bar card because I haven't done one of those for a little while and they're kind of fun. And I knew that my image, what I was planning was going to be fairly small image wise. And so I didn't want to take up, I wanted that to take up more real estate on my card, I guess. But when I pulled out this card base to cut down to a four bar size, I kind of liked that gray border, like the thicker gray border around it. And so I did end up keeping it at an A2 sized card. So I did do the inside of the card first, making sure that I didn't mess it up because then I'd have just probably grabbed a new card base or, you know, had to use one of my other sentiments on the inside to cover up my stamp blunder. It happens. So that pattern paper is the same one. I just cut it at an angle and it gives it a, a lot different look than the first card, which is it, I think it's, which way is it going on the first one? Up and down. This one looks more like a, a diagonal ring. We're going with that one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I popped up that square again and then placing it on my card, equal amounts. Okay, not equal. Eyeballed equal amounts from the top and the side. And then because my images are kind of on the smaller side, I, I fucked around with placement a little bit. I have issues with naked space on my cards. And so I, I'm trying to get better at that. Hence why when I do busy scenes, I have no problems because everything's everywhere and it's all good, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still getting over my little cold. So I do end up putting that sentiment, make a splash about the same distance from the bottom as the top of the square is from the top of the card. So it kind of gives it out that. I don't know, uniform look, I guess you could say.
and I couldn't decide if I wanted my bear all the way on the square or part way off. The, I was kind of thinking part way off the square, but then there's all that open space up above him. And so that's where my little jumping frog came in. So he goes up a little bit higher than I probably would have planned, but I really like how it draws the eye to the whole image or the whole panel and not just the little bear. I don't know how to explain it. It's just in my mind it looked better. I usually cut off the white part when I'm adding little images like this to one another because I don't know they're little images so that white to me takes away from the scene but it's probably here nor there. Nobody else probably notices it but me. And then I did pop up the puddle. I added dimension to the frog. So he is popped up as well. And then I will add the other splash to the bear already so I kind of know where he's going to go. And then I do cut up a little bit the part of the splash that's going to be overlapping the puddle. And then I will add him. So tell me what you think. If you like the three card series, I am more than willing to do some more like this because that's kind of how I craft in card making. I tend to use what's on my desk and I like to do series of cards that aren't the same but they have similar elements because I don't have to clean up as much stuff. And then I can use stuff from other ones that I didn't maybe use that I had planned on using. So I'm just adding some of those crave, cave crystals from Trinity Stamps. I used a lot of Trinity Stamps on this one today. And then I'm going in with some glossy accents on all the water things and the little frog eyes. And if you watch, I end up taking a, just kind of filling in some of those glossy accents didn't get where I needed them to be. And so that is my finished project for today, the last of the three. If you missed any of the other ones, please go back and find them if you are interested. Otherwise, thank you so much for all those that subscribe and have a great day and we will see you next time.